I was recording. Oh, thank you for waiting. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a bit of a wait, but um, at least you have a nice uh, Don Pachiro Kamaboko jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I have I have some experience in butchering names. I mean, I like that one. I think that one's my favorite. I also like Manjiro, Tatsuro, the guy with the hard head. We we'll just get that. Um, well, hello everybody. Thank you guys for coming. Um, how's everyone doing today? Um, Cosplaying in this weather is very interesting. I know there's a lot of warm cosplays, but you went for the shirtless Luffy. Yeah, <laughs> you're brave. I, I'm uh, interested to see if I see any Inoskes this weekend. That they would be very brave. Um, so um, it has been a number of years since I've been at KomoriCon. Did anyone see me the last time I was here? Hi, hi. Good to see you guys again. It's been since 2014. I've wow. been talking a lot since then. Um, well, welcome back, and hello to everyone. Um, who's been to KomoriCon before? Awesome, welcome. Whose first convention is this? Oh, sweet, welcome, guys. I love doing these events um, for, for voice actors. These experiences are just so special and so cool. Um, we work by ourselves in soundproof rooms. Uh, you just pour your heart into the microphone. You hope somebody hears it. So this is like a voice actor's applause. So thank you guys so much. Um, um, I, I think, because this is my first panel of the weekend, I think it's one of the first panels of the weekend. Uh, a lot of people are probably gonna miss this one because they're waiting in line. Uh, but um, just gives you guys more opportunities to ask questions. Um, but I might as well tell you how I got here. Um, so my name's Bryce Pappenbrook, by the way. Uh, you might know me as the voice of Aaron Yeager in Attack on Titan, uh, Kirito in Sword Art Online, uh, Inosuke Hashibila in Demon Slayer, Cat Noir in Miraculous <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening to me scream so much. Um, and a whole bunch more Wikipedia knows much better than I do. Um, so I started voice acting when I was eight years old. I was wow. fortunate enough to be born into a family of actors. My dad was working on a show called Power Rangers, if you guys have heard of that. Uh, he was Rio Revolto, the skeleton dude, um, and a bunch of the monsters. He had like the exact opposite voice that I do. His was like low and booming, and mine sounds like it did when I was in middle school, and it hasn't changed. Um, I have what I like to describe as Benjamin Button voice acting disease, um, where I sound a bit younger than I did a few years ago. It's interesting. Um, anyways, uh, I used to love to go to work with him, and um, at the end of one of his sessions, they needed a kid's voice, and he was like, he's a kid, throw him in the booth, and that's how I got started. Um, so I, I've been really, really lucky to be attached to some of those franchises that I, I mentioned. Some stuff from back in the day when I was a kid, uh, you might have heard me in. I worked on Cowboy Bebop. As an yeah. um, so I just have a couple lines, like one or two lines. They go to Mars, and there's all these orphans. And uh, there's this one orphan with a little robot, and he's like, look at this, look at this. That's me oh as a kid. He has a pot on his head, and in the script it said pothead. So, <laughs> yes, I am pothead from Cowboy Bebop. High on the resume. Um, another one from back in the day uh, was a show called Trigun. Have you guys seen that? So you might not know this, um, but Johnny Young Bosch, he plays Vash the Stampede, but I play Vash the Stampede as a kid. Um, so that was me as a kid playing Vash as a kid, only to grow up and in Blue Exorcist to be the older brother to Johnny, so ha ha, Johnny! <laughs> Um, and my, yeah, my very first lead in an anime uh, was in a show called Dot Hack Sign, Legend of the Twilight Bracelet, play a character named Shugo, uh, and that was me as a kid going into a video game, only to grow up to play Kirito 
a kid going into a video game, so how far I've come. Um, so yeah, I, I feel really fortunate to, to be attached to so many different shows, and um, I, I love what I get to do. In fact, on the way to this panel, walking from my table in the dealer's hall over here, I got an email that I booked a new role, and I, like every time that that happens, like I get this like excitement. Like I feel like, I don't know, you get a rush, because trying to book work as an actor is like buying lotto tickets. And um, you just audition as much as you can, that's buying as many lotto tickets as you can. And whenever I'm cast as a role, I feel like I've won something. So like getting that adrenaline rush and feeling this way, like I'm still on like this high of like, I booked something. Um, you know, it, it, it makes me know that I'm doing the right thing. Um, so yeah, excited, very excited to still be working as a voice actor. And I've been very, very busy these days. Uh, and looking kind of to the future in 2023, I think I have a lot of screaming in my future. Um, so I'm very excited about that too. Um, so here's what we'll do. We do have a microphone here. We might not need it. Um, if you want, you could come up and line up in front of the mic. Or what do you guys prefer? Do you want to use this mic? You just want to raise hands. Just raise hands. Let's do that. We'll make it laid back. We'll start over here. So let's go one and two. And you know, feel free, ask whatever you guys want. We'll just hang out and talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. But one thing I don't want to talk about, that's spoilers of Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, Sword Art, anything that's beyond uh, the anime, especially for me, because I don't know what's about to happen. Um, <laughs> so, haven't read the manga. Actually, I typically avoid the manga. Um, for, for a certain reason. I haven't been spoiled, and I avoid the entire internet. Um, <laughs> so my, my method is to go in blind. The first time I'll say the lines as those characters is right there in the moment. And I wanna feel what my characters are feeling. So if I know what's gonna happen in Attack on Titan, it might affect the way that I deliver those lines. So I'm avoiding reading them and, and looking ahead, even though, I believe in one week I might meet the creator of Attack on Titan. Oh. Um, he's coming to the US for the very first time oh. at an event called Anime NYC. Um, and I was booked that same weekend at another event called Anime Pasadena in LA where I live. And Anime NYC is like, you probably want to come to our event too. So I am. I'm going there on Friday and then flying home on a red eye after that to go to the other event and meet a bunch of other people. So it's a little crazy, but it's going to be worth it. I'm, I'm so excited at the, the opportunity that I might be able to meet uh, Isayama-san. So it's exciting time. So avoid Attack on Titan spoilers, please. Um, actually, who's read to the end of the manga? So you guys know, don't tell me anything. Who's seen all of the anime that's come out so far? That's me. Awesome. Who's never seen Attack on Titan before? Amazing. All good. Um, you know, for you guys, it's like a lighthearted comedy. <laughs> so, you know, if you're having a rough day, if you need something to cheer you up, just start Attack on Titan. I, I wonder how many times that's worked, where people are just like, Bryce told me to start Attack on Titan on this day. No! Oh, oh. You, that that you first opening does amp you up. I still only know one word, and that's Yega! Um, so, yes, I'm sorry. Um, we'll start, we'll go one and then two. Yeah. Yes. And then in the second season, you play Denver Brothers Zelders also. Yes. You do very different voices. And yes. Absolutely. So, actually, and you might not know, I play a third character in Seven Deadly Sins. Oh so I'll share a little bit about that, too. Um, so, who's seen Seven Deadly Sins? Uh, I play Meliodas. And my trick to play Meliodas is I raise my eyebrows so high it stretches out my vocal cords. <laughs> so to play his brother and keep him different, I lower my eyebrows. It's all in the eyebrows. I don't know why. And once I discovered that, it was, you know, very, very, I wouldn't say easy to go in and play, but, you know, I knew what I needed to do to position myself as each character. Um, 
And because they talk to each other a lot and they fight each other, what I did was I recorded everything as Meliodas, and then I played off of myself as Zeldris, um, which is so much fun. I love playing multiple characters in a show. Um, there's another show, and I hope I get to continue to play both brothers, Tokyo Revengers, you guys seen that one? Uh, I play a character named Smiley, and another one named Angry. Um, so, fingers crossed, Angry doesn't talk much in season one, he just goes, <clears throat> and that's it. Um, but I heard they talk to each other down the line, so maybe they'll bring me back to do that. Um, so, the other character, does anyone know the other character I play in Seven Deadly Sins? I mean, it's Meliodas, Zeldris, and then one other smaller character, much smaller, is your hint. So, do, do you know? <laughs> no, that's actually Christina V. Um, so and Christina, it, it's, anime relationships are so ridiculous. So, I would sometimes start my day recording Miraculous Ladybug. Christina plays Ladybug, so I would go in and to Christina I would be like, hello, my lady. And then in the afternoon, I would work on Seven Deadly Sins, and I would be like, can I eat this piggy? Um, both Christina. Um, so yeah, the other character I play in Seven Deadly Sins comes in the first season. There's a tournament to win Deanne's hammer. And the referee of that tournament, his name is Love Helm. He looks like a little tiny thing that someone threw a sheet over and cut a hole in it. That's me. Um, the most annoying character in the show, and I'm very proud of that. So, I, I, was, I was watching the show in Japanese, which is actually kind of rare for a voice actor to be able to do. Normally, we don't know what we're working on, we don't get scripts ahead of time, we don't know what's gonna happen to our characters. So we're really going on this adventure in like real time, but if I have the opportunity to watch a show, and I love a show, like Seven Deadly Sins, I couldn't stop watching, I'll check it out. So I was watching in Japanese, and I got to that part, and I heard that voice of the seiyuu who recorded him, and I'm like, that's very annoying. Let me see if I can do that, too. Um, so I did, and I, I thought I sounded pretty close to what the original seiyuu did. Um, so I was walking by one of the casting directors and producers in the studio, and I'm like, hey, I sent you an audition for Seven Deadly Sins, and she's like, you're really what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, just trust me. And I went and practiced a little more. I sent her something. She just responded with, I think we can make this work. Um, so recorded all of Meliodas. A couple weeks went by, I got an email. We need you to come in to record Seven Deadly Sins. I'm like, oh. So I kept practicing at home. And at that time, I didn't have like a true studio. Um, I just had kind of a closet, like a space to work, but not something soundproof. Uh, and this character has no volume control. Um, my wife at the time was very pregnant, and I was practicing at home and practicing, and then she bust into my studio and said, if you do that voice one more time, I'm having this baby now. <laughs> so I stopped practicing the voice at home. Um, but I'll give you a little sample so you can see what she was experiencing on a daily basis. He sounds like this. I don't need a mic for this one. <laughs> and that's my <not> that. <laughs> uh, You're welcome. That's uh, that's what she says every uh, every day. Uh, I, I have three kids now, by the way. I, I had zero kids the last time I was at KomoriCon, so uh, they are all as loud as me. So <laughs> she has a great time. Um, yes. What was your question? Sure. Uh, nope. Um, so, uh, we signed these things called NDAs, non-disclosure agreements. You might hear this a lot from voice actors, and basically... It's the no-spoilers Yes, yes, true, but it's also the, we will sue you if you spoil something agreement. So I try very hard not to get sued. Um, exactly. Also, you might find when you talk to voice actors, they're just like, I don't know or what are you talking about, or like they just seem like kind of clueless, and there's a reason for that too. The studios tell us nothing, absolutely nothing, because they know we talk for a living and we'll probably say the wrong thing. So they just don't tell us anything and then we can't mess anything up. Um, so while I do know what I will be working on, I will try very hard to work on it and not be fired or sued, so no. Um, but 
as soon as I can, as soon as they're like, tell people, I'll announce it on my social media. Um, usually, I find out that I can talk about stuff from other people that discover it before me. So if you guys know something that's been announced, tell me. Because if I might not know I can talk about it, because um, there are things that I can't talk about yet, and I cannot wait. I'll, I'll just say that. Like, I would say, I'm trying to pick my words very carefully. I've never had this many lines as a character in a project. Coming later this year. Um, so exciting. Uh, yes. Ooh, there's so many to choose from, and we keep inventing new ones, because all those cat puns are not in the script. Um, we sneak them in the show. In fact, one of the episodes that came out just recently in season five, he talks about his favorite drink, which is cat Coca-Cola. Um, definitely not in the script, that was Ezra. He, he wins on that one. Um, I mean, it's, it's so hard to narrow it down now. We've, we've recorded over a hundred episodes, video game, movies coming. Um, there's so many good moments. Um, I'll just tell you about one that I snuck into the show. Um, so when Cat Noir exits a scene, he uses his staff and like launches himself, and then he like disappears into nowhere, right? So as I was recording these scenes, he would be like, okay, bye, and then launch himself, and I would go, whee! <laughs> just for fun, just to sneak it in there as a blooper. And of course the engineer would be like, ha ha ha, delete. Um, but one time he was like, ha ha ha, and moved it to another track, and whoever was reviewing the episode heard it and was like, oh that's great, you should do that. And they left it in the show! And then, whoever was writing the show saw that and was like, oh yeah, he should do that, and now it's in the show, like in the script. It says, Wee! <laughs> So it's canon now. So that was just a blooper. So I think every time I hear that or see that or other characters start to do it, I think, oh, good times. Um, so that just makes me happy. That and every cat pun. Um, yes. Yeah, so you guys might not know, but Sword Art Online and the incident that happens in the first season happened on 11-6-2022. Oh, yeah. So um, it was really cool to see everyone celebrating SAO Day. Um, you know, it's, it's really crazy because I think about those first sessions and, and talking about 2022 and the technology that's coming and I, I thought, oh, it's so far away. And now here we are. Um, did you guys see that the creator of uh, the, was it the Oculus, I think? Yeah. Yeah. The VR supposedly made a headset where if you actually if you die. die. Yeah, so <laughs> this guy, this, um, this uh, tech guy created a headset with explosives on the front. So if your characters die, you die in the game. Like Sword Art Online, inspired by Sword Art Online. Yeah. <laughs> I would die immediately. I'm the player in the game that's jumping against the wall. Just That would be me. Um, or, or when I play games, and I, I do not have time to game very often with three kids and all this stuff going on. Um, but when I play games, I usually hear myself dying in the games that I'm in. So like Call of Duty Ghosts, when I play multiplayer, I'm the US military voice. And, Call of Duty Ghosts. I just heard a lot of me going, because <laughs> I was terrible. Um, but yeah, it is, it is very cool to think we've come this far, and what's so exciting about that franchise is that progressive is a thing. SAO Progressive is the first um, chapter, the first arc from Asuna's perspective. Um, and I thought it was so clever that after all that time, we went back to Aincrad. We get to you know, experience more details and see other things that were there that we didn't know in that first season. And to play Kirito younger again, because time has passed in the story, so he kind of ages a little bit through the end of Alicization. Um, so I got to play teenage, younger teenage Kirito, um, and it was very, very cool to see that first movie. And um, 
know that the second one is coming very soon. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Go for it. You'd like to video? Oh yeah, I don't mind. If you want to record a piece of the panel or record okay. me, I'm totally cool with that. <laughs> Ken Noir and Meliodas are in a bar. Um, <laughs> sounds like the good start of a joke. I haven't written the punchline yet. Um, yeah, I don't know what Adrian Cat Noir would think of Meliodas. I mean, Adrian's a high schooler. Meliodas has got a couple thousand years on him. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe, maybe he would take uh, love advice from Meliodas. <laughs> Um, I mean, do you have anything like specific? You think that you got to give me more like like w what's happening? They're just in a room together, like. Uh, I mean, I guess it. I guess it depends on the situation, right? <laughs> Meliodas giving Adrian love advice. Oh no. <laughs> It would go, it would go very poorly. He'd be like, you should try some of this ale. I'm 15. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it would start. <laughs> um, I'll have to think more. It's always interesting, like, two characters connecting with each other. Like, a question I get a lot is, if this character and this character were to fight, and I'm just like, Stop making them fight each other. They live somewhere in my head. I also get, which character is your favorite character? Which one did you enjoy voicing the most? And I don't have an answer to that. I mean, I mentioned like, booking a role as a voice actor is like winning the lotto. Uh, and I just feel very fortunate to have been part of all of these awesome shows. Um, and you become attached to these characters. Like, they become like a part of you. Like, your kids that live in your head. And a lot of my kids are crazy. And I don't want to make them mad. Um, yes, over here. I did. Family Guy. <laughs> no joke. Uh, I was literally watching Family Guy the night I got the audition. And I, I love watching cartoons. Like, there's an episode of Family Guy where Peter does a very bad Italian accent. He's like, so I did that in my audition. And they're like, this guy! So it is a Family Guy inspired Italian accent. It is not authentic at all. Um, and yeah, I think it's great. I think it fits JoJo very well. Um, but that's the inspiration. I, I recommend testing your Family Guy Italian. It's, it works very well. Um, so we'll go back over here and then we'll work our way back this way. Yes, we'll go um, one and then two. Okay. So how do you keep talking through doing such like rough voices and doing all that? Because it seems like it would be very hard to talk after a while. Yeah, meaning like vocal health or like how do I not lose my voice? Yes. Um, and through rough characters, do you mean Inosuke? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I have different tricks for each character, but I'll share what I do for Inosuke. I get a really dark, disgusting cup of coffee. <laughs> Black tar in a cup. The kind that is so bitter, when you take a sip, it makes you angry, right? So I have this, this cup of death with me. Take a sip before every take, and I'm just like, eh! and that's in your skin. <laughs> And that's it. Black, disgusting coffee. Um, once I discovered that, actually, co the coffee really does change your voice. Once I discovered that, I just think about that coffee and I can maintain Inosuke forever. Now, Aaron, I cannot. Kirito, I cannot. Um, those ones and, and the intensity of the screams in some of the shows, there's no protecting your voice. Uh, and I think it's worth it for those shows to, to put yourself out there, to, to, to open yourself up to that kind of I don't know, danger as a voice actor, um, but in those shows, especially like emotional trauma also, 
because I want to feel what my characters are feeling. I'm literally opening up scars to connect with them, to feel, to get as close as I can to feeling what they're, they're feeling in these moments, and it's not easy. But if it comes through as real, it's worth it. Um, so that's, that's the hope, that, that all that work and all that effort actually comes through. Nice. <laughs> um, yes? Um, did you enjoy voicing Ayegi or Nagito more in Dog and Ropa? Did I enjoy vo voicing Nagi or Nagito? Yeah. I mean, I, I, again, it's like, how can I choose? Like, Nagi was so interesting. Um, as I was working on, so who, who knows what Danganronpa is? Awesome. I see a Monokuma and a Nagi. Um, who's, who's never heard of Danganronpa? Sweet. So I'll describe the first game to you guys. There's all these, and you guys let me know if I do an okay job with this. So all these kids, that have these super high school level powers, essentially. They're stuck inside a high school and trapped there by, hold it up, a mechanical bear that tells them if they don't murder another student and get away with it, he'll kill them all. Um, so they start killing each other, and Aegi is like the detective solving these murders, and they have these cases where they figure out who's killed who. And when I started on the game, I knew nothing about the franchise never seen the scripts. So as I was going through that first game, it was like I was experiencing this stuff in my head. So it was like I was there, I didn't know who was gonna die next, I didn't know what the clues were, like I was trying to solve it with Nagi. So it was really fun. Um, and then Nagito is Nagito. Um, <laughs> I felt like I was playing the Joker. Um, and to play them uh, both was really, really fun. In fact, Who's seen all of the anime? Awesome. I'm the only actor that's in every iteration of Danganronpa. All the games, all the anime, literally because of super high school level luck. Um, and not to spoil anything, sorry if this is a bit of a spoiler, but they actually talk to each other at the very end of the anime. And I thought, you know, this may be my last opportunity to play these characters. I'll sneak a blooper in the show. Um, I'll just throw one out there for fun for the crew. So um, I did that, and it was a simultan, which means it's released pretty quickly. And uh, right after it was released, press went out from what was Funimation. We are so sorry, a blooper made it in the show. And I was like, oh no, I'm gonna get fired. Um, that was a great run. It was someone else's blooper. Mine made it to the Blu-ray. <laughs> so, so. Nagito reaches out and grabs Nagi's hand, and he goes, his hands are so soft. <laughs> and as Nagi, I went, why is he sticky? <laughs> and now it's Ken. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, we'll go over here, yeah. So there are new SAO games, including a new one coming out in 2023. I saw. A hundred percent, yes. Um, I, I mean, working on a video game is really, really fun, um, but playing Kirito is something that's so special to me. Not, not only because uh, I've been playing him for the last decade, but just because of the amount of like connection I have. Like, what Kirito says to Asuna, when he's talking to Asuna, that's me delivering those lines to my wife. Like, that's the, the, the connection that I make to Kirito. Um, so it, it's such an amazing franchise, such an amazing show. I would love the opportunity to play Kirito again in the games. Um, I actually did get the opportunity to play him in a video game. Um, has anyone played Tales of Arise? So the Tales franchise is so cool. Highly, highly recommend it. In Tales of Arise, I play a character named Law. Um, and he was very different from the other character I played in the last Tales franchise I was a part of, Tales of Graces. His name is Asbel Lant, and Asbel's all about protection and friendship, and Law is about punching and meat. Um, <laughs> so it's really fun to play a very different character. And Kirito and Asuna are actually DLC characters in Tales of Arise. So I got to fight me as Kirito, as me as Law. It was really, really cool. Um, normally they don't dub those games, 
because it's like, um, I think they look at it as too big of a risk. It's very expensive to create video games and to localize them, first off. And if you're selling a game to one, only the people that have that system, and then two, only people who are fans of Sword Art or fans of that franchise, they look at it as, as like a, a small subsection of a smaller subsection. But I think that anime now is truly mainstream. It's, it's evident that it is. And Sword Art, I think, is one of the most popular franchises in anime, so I would love for them to dub the games. I would love to be a part of it. If they decided to, I would hope that they would bring me in for Kirito. Um, if they do, it's gonna be awesome. And if not, I totally understand why too. And um, I, I still say, buy the games, celebrate the games, play them, they look really cool. Even, yeah, including new characters, of Right, exactly. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to be a part of that. Also, uh, Matsuoka-san, who plays Kirito in Japanese, is an awesome actor, an awesome person. I've been really fortunate to meet him actually a few times. Um, and just to show you like how generous of a person Matsuoka-san is, Shermi and I uh, got to MC a panel at Anime Expo. It was an SEO panel, and they brought over a number of the Japanese cast, and Matsuoka-san was there as well. And uh, that panel was sponsored by Oculus which was so cool. So all of the people on the panel were given Oculuses. Um, and I thought, oh, that was, that was so cool that Oculus did that. Well, I was talking to Matsuoka-san and um, he, he said he had watched some of our version and he thought, you know, he, he was very complimentary on my performance and I was for his. I'm a big fan of his performance in the show. Uh, and he just said, you know, I, I wanna give you something to remember me by and you can have my Oculus. So like him giving me a VR headset, like was just so cool and so generous of him. Um, it just shows you like the kind of person that he is. So it's always very interesting to share roles with him. Kirito, Law, who I just mentioned, played by Matsuoka-san, and Inosuke Hashibira, played by Matsuoka-san. So it's, it's very cool that we share a number of roles. Um, yeah. Okay, so last time I saw you was at Kurenikukan like five, six years ago. Oh, yeah, awesome. So my question for you is, are you still pursuing your dream to become a magical girl? <laughs> <laughs> always, <laughs> always am. Um, um, it's, it's, yeah, Cat Noir does get close, for sure. Oh, yeah, he, he does, uh, uh, what, what's the name, Mr. Bun? Yeah. Lucky Chime, Lucky Chime, Lucky Chime. Um, <laughs> Yes, always. Um, you never know. Maybe, maybe I'll get more opportunities to play a magical girl coming up here. Um, yes. Um, so there are some silly villain names in Miraculous Ladybug. Yes. Were there any that you had to take over and over again because you could not keep a straight face while talking to or about a certain villain? Um, not none that like like come to the front of my mind, where we were just like cracking up so much. Um, there, I mean, there actually is a moment in season five. I don't believe it's been released yet, so I won't tell you. I'll just say, when it comes, you'll know. It's like, like if if people discover this, it's, it's gonna be kind of hard to find it, I think, and I'm not sure. Uh, how obvious it will be. But when someone discovers it, and they see what we got into the show, they're gonna be so happy. Um, so that moment, and you'll know when you see it, I was cracking up for quite some time. Um, also, what are your thoughts on Mr. Pigeon? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor Mr. Pigeon. <laughs> how many times has he been akumatized? 30? 72? Can we have like a running counter online? Yeah. And every time he's acrimatized, just like Todd Haberkorn gets like a phone notification. You can acrimatize again, Todd. Uh, he's, he's, and he's great as Mr. Pigeon. I feel like, I, I don't know why, but like sometimes Mr. Pigeon reminds me of Todd. Just like the way he moves sometimes. I don't know. I, he's so, so funny as that character. Todd's great. Um, yes. Uh, so, um, there's a 
Wait, that's Todd? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Um, and then second off, you quit before I asked. You quit Felix too, right? I do. I think you know where I'm going with it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to avoid it because it's season five, and I'm like, I don't know what's happening with Felix yet. Mm, <laughs> it's, oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> So exciting. I mean, it, like like we mentioned before, I played Meliodas and Zeldris, so I'm like, okay, he looks like him, he kind of sounds like him, but it's not him, so it has to be in, like, has to be reasonable that someone would confuse them, but the viewer has to know that's not him. So how can we come up with this personality and this other voice that will do that? And then do I get to talk to myself? I do. Um, there's like an episode where they're at Adrian's house and he's like calling from the other room. Like that was so much fun to play. What about that part where he was like, I'm sorry to come to your father's funeral. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there's a few of those lines where we get to them and we're like, what? And, and you know, we record out of order. I don't know if you know this also, we get episode like three and 23 on the same day. So when we get to episode 23, sometimes we're like, what is happening? And Ezra, who knows a ton about the show, the director, he's the same way. He's just like, I don't know what that is. So my favorite one of those, there's an episode where Adrian throws a party and he invites all the guys from the city into the party, right? And there's this one part where a banana flies across the stream. And he says like, get peachy or something like that. Stay peachy, stay peachy. We were like, I, I stopped, I'm like, was that a banana? <laughs> and Ezra's like, yeah. I'm like, what did you just say? Stay peachy. Why, why do you say that? I don't know. And then I said, that is now my favorite character in the show. <laughs> so sometimes that happens. Um, and we just have no context. So we just do the best we can. Um, but yeah, there's some, there's some interesting ones. So we're gonna go back here and then up here. Yes? Um, do you have an anime or TV show that's already been completed that you wish you would have been able to work on? Like, say, Full Metal Alchemist, or Fairy Tail, anything like one of those kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, like, I wanna be in that show, because that's taking away from another actor that played those roles. That, that There's a reason why that person was cast as that role. Um, so I, I, I don't like to go back and be like, oh, if I could have played this one character, um, I, I, I try not to do that, because there's, you know, it's, it's just not me. Um, is there a franchise I'd love to be in? Tons of them. Have I auditioned for a lot of shows and characters that I'd love to be a part of? Tons of them. My outbox in my email is like a graveyard of auditions that I went for that I wasn't cast in. Um, I mean, I, I think I've, I've made this clear and I've said this before, like I grew up watching shows like Pokemon and Sailor Moon, but my favorite was Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Um, I would love to be a part of that show. Uh, I've auditioned for the show, but I wasn't cast. Um, so you never know, maybe there'll be a character in the future. People have tagged me and said like, this guy that's coming up in the next thing, like I hear your voice is that character. I'm like, never know, like that would be amazing. I would love to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, it'd be cool to be part of that franchise. I'd love to be part of a show like SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> that would be so much fun. Or just something that hasn't been out yet never know what's gonna come next, and that's the exciting thing about being a voice actor. Um, you know, one day you're, you're working on something and you audition for something, and then the next day your whole life has changed because you're going on this journey with that character. So it keeps it really exciting. Um, so yeah, who knows? Um, who knows what'll be next? Yes?
saw you as the characters and all that, but when they saw you as the actor, they thought you were so unattractive. They actually became a big thing to her. Unattractive? Yes, they were. <laughs> they were like, like, they were going on saying how all your characters are attractive, but when they looked at you, they were like, why didn't anyone tell me that the actor was ugly? And so many people started fighting and saying, are you telling me that Bryce is going to attract him and everyone was just getting up on them? Well, that's rude. Exactly. Um, I, well, I mean, it's, you know, it's funny, like, I'm not my characters. Like, I'm, I'm a person, I'm creating these characters. I'm, I'm trying to bring myself to these characters. But the characters are animated. Like, I've been Kirito for 10 years, he's still 15. So I think like someone like that that's putting that vitriol and hate on the internet, I think they should probably look inward and there's probably something about themselves that's not great. Um, they don't sound like a very nice person. Um, oh, well that's, that's nice of them. <laughs> well that's nice of them, I mean, I, you know, I'm not on screen. They don't have to know what I look like or and and to be frank like I don't care what they think and um, You know like I, I Don't do this to try to impress people or try to make them think I'm attractive or uh, You know, there, there's none of that. That's not why I'm a voice actor. That's not why I'm doing this um, So yeah to them. I would just say Why 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 do I care what you think it means literally nothing? So yeah, don't care. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think more people uh, should think about the words they're putting out on the internet because not everyone doesn't care. And if someone's putting out something that's negative about someone else and making them feel bad, like they're just not a nice person. So their, their opinion should mean nothing. No, you know, at conventions, um, I love doing these events because all of my interactions have been positive. And I think the, the, um, the people on the internet that put that stuff out there, they're too, I don't know, they're not, they're too insecure. They don't, like, their opinions don't mean anything. Um, and of the stuff that's negative, even on the internet, there is so much overwhelming positivity um, so I choose to just look at that. I, I really don't care about the other stuff. Um, and I, I don't want to let someone who's failed in these other things bring me down um, because they're upset or jealous. Um, I would say, yeah, yeah, means literally zero. But to the people that came to my defense and said I, I wasn't, you know, not nice to look at, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, but no, to me, like, I'm very confident in who I am, uh, and their opinion is not something I'm looking for. So they could just keep it to themselves. The internet is a very strange thing because it makes it seem like those opinions are heard or those opinions mean something. But really, like, who is that person to say that? I, so, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all, and they can say it all they want. Yeah, I think differently. I think my, my wife thinks differently, too, and that's what really matters. Uh, and I've been with my wife since high school. Um, so I think her opinion is the one that matters the most. Yeah. So I try to, I try to stay in the gym. Um, we'll go here and there. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to find something in every character that I can relate to, and there's some definitely that I have more to relate to than others, like Henry and Fire Emblem Awakening. Like, I don't find very much connection between me and Henry, um, but I, I think there are things like I discovered about him that could make me know who that character is. Like, has anyone played Fire Emblem or know who Henry is? So just to describe him, he's like a very happy mage holding the crow. And all I had when I got um, the, when I went into the studio to record was a picture of him. 
Um, so we had to come up with this voice, and the, the very first line was, yay blood. <laughs> so I was like, oh, interesting. And, uh, and an actor-director named Patrick Seitz was there that day uh, directing, and he's like, all right, let's come up with a voice for Henry. Uh, so I went, yay, blood! And he's like, uh, he's more excited about this. So I went, yay, blood! And he's like, uh, he's like a thousand times more excited about this. So I went, yay, blood! <laughs> he's evil Elmo. <laughs> so yeah, don't find a lot of connection there, but I think, I think the character that I, I feel um, that I put the most of myself into is Rin Okumura from Blue Exorcist. Um, I think like, uh, you know, I, I kind of do different things to, to position myself as the characters. For Rin, I, I just jump in the booth and I'm Rin. Um, yeah, and, and also like Rin when he's happy, now when he's like burning people with hellfire, when he's just kind of his like happy self, like it's a lot of my personality in the character. Um, so yeah, I'd say Rin. Cool. Um, I just have time for a, a couple more, so we'll go here next, yes. Are you trying to, or do you think you ever would try to get into uh, film or screen acting as well as voice acting? Um, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say like, never, um, but no. Um, I think that there's a lot of room for growth and um, things I'm still learning about my voice and about myself as a voice actor. Also, like, I'm very comfortable in front of a microphone. In front of a camera, like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, I mean, there's other actors like Shermie who are incredible in front of a mic, in front of a, a camera, on stage. Like, Shermie has studied the craft and, and is that type of actress. I focus on just what I do behind the mic. Um, that's really my focus, and my love, and my passion. Um, so I want to do things that will continue my growth as a voice artist. Um, but I did work with Jeremy on a web series uh, called Confessionals. Uh, it came out a number of years ago. It is so fun, so good. I play her twin. She's mean to me. It's awesome. Uh, and I had a lot of fun in front of the camera. So I wouldn't say, like, never. Uh, I also just started a TikTok um, after years and years of people telling me to do that. So find me on there. I'll do things in front of the camera there, uh, and, and that'll be fun. So that'll probably be the closest I'll come to it for a bit. Um, so we'll go one and then two. Yeah. I mean, can I choose Ladybug? <laughs> Is that an option? Uh, I ship the whole square, by the way. Um, not one piece of it, the whole square. But, but, before you clap, I want that to happen in like 15 years. Because I like being employed. And I feel like that's the end of the show. Um, they've gotten very good at teasing us. Um, but yeah, I, I think I like Ladybug as a character. Um, and I, I love working on the show, um, not just because it's a great show, but also because I win dad points because my kids like the show. Um, and my daughter goes to school and tells her teacher, like, my dad's Cat Noir. And, and her teacher's like, oh, that's so cute. Your dad was Cat Noir for Halloween? <laughs> it's, it's great. It's really great. Um, yes. I mean, like, you gotta point me in the direction of a character a little bit. There's too many in there. Meliodas and Cat Noir. Aaron Yeager. Something is Aaron, something is Meliodas, and something is Cat Noir. Um, and he knows me. Um, I mean, do you, <laughs> right? Do you want to help me out with your favorite Cat Noir line? Ah, there's a cat pun. Um, how about full counter? Yeah, that one is my um, How about, I have to change, they're, they're different areas of my body, so for Aaron, uh, I think about traffic in LA, I'll kill them all. Uh, and then, how about, how about for Inosuke Hashibira, the true leader right here. There you go. Um, okay, we got time for one more, is that okay? 
Who knows? Right here. And just so you guys know, I have two other panels this weekend. Tomorrow is one of my favorite panels. It's called the Efforts and Reactions panel. Please come. If you've never seen it before, never done something like that, you will have such a good time. I love it. So that's tomorrow, I think at 3 p.m. Uh, I leave time for Q&A also at the end of that one. So if I missed you, ask me at the next panel or uh, come to my table. I'm going to go right back there after. And feel free to just come up and ask questions too. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned like naturally my speaking voice tends to sound younger. Um, also, like I've done a lot of exploring in my higher range. So creating those characters, like it just starts with who is the character and then we find that voice. I also have this really interesting texture to my voice. That's kind of hard to disguise. And I think that's why people are like, oh, I can tell that that's Bryce because that texture shines through in a lot of my characters, but it's, it's appropriate for those characters. And I'm not trying to like create a voice that's so different because like if like you know a, a, a cartoony character came out of Kitty Toe's mouth like like if a cartoony voice like that was just different for the point of being different than something else I did it wouldn't make sense so I'm creating a, a voice for a character at that time um, and then how do I make him sound young I I think I just you know Benjamin Button voice acting disease. Um, also, like, speaking like a, a, someone who's that age, like, that's important. Like, not, maybe not pronouncing all of the words perfectly by using a little slang, by, like, just making the characters sound like they should. I mean, those are things that help. And a good director and a good producer and a good writer will kind of adapt the show to make it, to make it easier to do that. Um, so, yeah, thank you. I'm glad that they sound young. Uh, I think... I, I, I've envisioned myself as like a 90 year old man still going, I'm Mel Yannis, with a cane. Um, so hopefully I can continue to do that. You never know, your voice changes as you get older. So one day I might hit puberty. We'll see what happens. Um, well, thank you guys so much. This was a really fun Q&A. Um, really appreciate you guys coming back. Um, looking forward to an awesome weekend. I'm gonna go back to my booth that's in the Komori Mart area that way, I believe, uh, and I'll hang out there. So please come by, check out all my art, grab an autograph, ask your questions, and have a great time, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.